All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are live here in Bryan, Texas at Bryan High School for the 5A area round. Anderson coming in tonight, the higher seed, so they will be the home team taking on the Eagles out of New Caney High School. New Caney uh, coming off their first win uh, in program history at the playoff level, I believe, um, according to some sources that I saw at the Houston Chronicle. Um, so New Caney enters today on a five-game win streak in the first round. They took down uh, Fulcher Jordan. That was a 58-51 to 51 game, pretty evenly matched there. Anderson coming off a win, of course, against Pflugerville Connolly. That one a little bit closer uh, than we thought for most of the game. Connolly really stuck with it. It's a very athletic team, very young, and Anderson was doing them quite a bit of favors with the way they were turning the ball over in that game. But down the stretch in the fourth quarter, Anderson able to keep the Cougars at arm's length pretty much the, the whole stretch of the way. They ended up winning by double figures, 58-46. Uh, to 46. The big key in that one was the big man down low, Nate Langley. Connolly didn't really have much to, to answer Nate with. He was big and strong down there. Uh, on the block once you get him the ball he's, he's pretty automatic with it he was certainly automatic in that game jack francis tallied 14. mitchell whitlow big game from him tallied 12. page and Wackerby both had six wagner with four gonna need a stronger offensive output here tonight from bennett Blackerby. he was excellent on the defensive side of the ball as you see him uh he's the closest well maybe not but one of the closest players to you down there in that far right corner we are four minutes 10 seconds away from getting started here. This new Caney team, pretty young as well. They're very hungry to keep their season going. Go back to their uh, district. They were in second place as a 10 and four district record carried them to that 23 and 12 overall were the Eagles. The winner of that district was the Kingwood Park Panthers. They finished at 14-0, just like the Anderson Trojans. They are still in the bracket. Cleveland and Lake Creek, the other two teams, uh, making the playoffs in that district. If you remember the area round last year, we were out at Bryan at Rudder High School, where Anderson did defeat that same Lake Creek team. But now, looking ahead to the bracket, Anderson inches closer and closer to a potential uh, matchup with Beaumont United. Uh, but they still have a couple games to get through before they can do that. And as they saw against Connolly, there's no sure things here in the playoffs. But they are here tonight after an excellent, excellent game from several different players. Colin Page came and made some, some important winning plays. Not sure if they win uh, or if they win as handily as they do uh, without Colin Page in that game. He was magnificent on the defensive end. But. We do want to look ahead just one game. The winner uh, of this game, that has already been determined. Weiss out of Flukerville, team that took down Lockhart in the first round. That game was 63-46, to 46, so a 17-point win for the Wolves. And they beat a and Consolidated by six last night at 6.30. That one took place in Giddings. So the winner here will play the winner there. So it's Weiss. And that's good news for Anderson, uh, as if they win, they won't have to travel too far as Weiss is another one of those Louisville schools. And uh, little <laughs> another good thing for us here is we did do two playoff games from uh, Weiss High School last season. In the first round, um, the Louisville game was out at Weiss. I missed that one. But the Hendrickson game in which Anderson was eliminated, we had one of our toughest times just staying on the air. So uh, if we... Anderson does end up playing Weiss, then it won't be at Weiss. So that's, that's not my plan before. But now just two minutes to go before we get started here. Both teams are going to head back to their bench, get some shots up uh, in warm-ups. The Trojans have traveled out here. Got a pretty good crowd of, of Trojan fans. You can't really see them there um, down on the floor level. So can't really see. We are we are up in our own little press box. I don't think I've ever been in a gym where I've got to use a press box, but here I am, I've got my, I've got my own little room back here, it's great. And another thing that's great is that guy, what's, what's going on with him? Uh, class of 1989, Viking Pride Never Dies. Um, but they've got a real grumpy Santa to watch over the gym. 
Kind of looks like the, the scary ice monsters from that one Trail of Lights exhibit. Uh, if that if that rings any bells, if not, don't worry about it. I don't think they've had that for like, like probably like ten years at this point. But it scared me when I was a kid. So here we go. Both teams out onto the floor, getting lined up for our national anthems. Imagine Anderson's going to rock with the same starting lineup as it has been so effective all season. The team scored all but six. That, that five scored all but six of Anderson's points in the first round. And New Caney, they've got a pretty small roster, but they've got some juniors and seniors. They've got plenty of sophomores, so we'll see what their roster looks like. I know they've got a 6'7 player in, I believe, Braden Sheldon. But for now, it's anthem time. We'll be right back. Trojans. This is a 5A Region 3 area playoff game. To introduce the visiting New Caney Eagles, number zero, DJ Lewis. Number five, Drayvon Wilson. Number 11, Nate Flowers. Number 14, Jeremy Roman. Number 15, Kamar Dove. And number 23, Jordan Brown. Now to introduce the starting lineup for the Eagles. At guard, six foot, two inch senior, number one, Joey Hubbard. At guard, six foot, four inch junior, number two, Kendall Dove. At guard, five foot, ten inch junior, number four, Dylan Dempsey. At guard, six foot two inch senior, number 10, Samuel Brandon. And a forward, six foot seven inch senior, number 33, Brayton Sheldon. The Eagles are coached by Matt Farmer, assisted by Sean Lexima, Paul Dempsey, and Matt Rodman. Now to introduce the Austin Anderson Trojans. All right, for the Anderson Trojans, number three, Corey Price. Number four, Jackson Gill. Number 11, Mac Mike Wagner. Number 13, Vince Bazarian. Number 21, Campbell Duncan. Number 22, Derek Armour. Number 25, Kalen Hall. Number 32, Lane Donahoe. Number 33, Colin Page. And number 35, Fred Bell. And the starting lineup for the Trojans. At guard, six foot junior, number one, Mitchell Whitlow. At guard, at guard, six foot, two inch senior, number five, Jack Francis. At guard, six foot junior, number 10, Bennett Blackerby. 
At guard, 5 foot 11 inch senior, number 11, Mike Wagner. At forward, 6 foot 3 inch senior, number 24, Nate Langley. Also on the team, number 12, Andrew Alexander. The Trojans are coached by Daniel Pittsford, assisted by Eric Swanson, Jose Chavez, Michael Stratton, and Robert Lynch. I miss Dr. Buckman. But Trojans are ready. We are ready. It's going to need another big game from the man Nate Langley as New Caney's out here with the six foot seven player and Braden Sheldon. He's there to do the jump ball. You see Nate, how he stacks up to him down there. But here we go. Same five for the Trojans. Out there now is Hubbard Dempsey. Brandon, uh, Hubbard, Dove, Dempsey, Brandon, and Sheldon for the Eagles. And here we go. <laughs> Can't imagine. Uh, I, I have an idea how this one's going to go. But Langley's going to win the opening tip. Hard over height for number 24, and we are underway. There's Nate with it on the wing. Trojans with the ball first. Langley going to put it on the ground, gets it up to his man Francis. Out there defending him is Kendall Dove. This is a new Caney team with some height and some length as that's going to be an illegal screen going against Langley. So Zebra is setting the tone early. And going to take it up is number four, Dylan Dempsey, a junior guard. Here he is out on the perimeter. They swing it back to him. Dempsey had it on the right side. Now back out for number one, Joey Hubbard. We're going to take it to Blackaby. They get it off to Braden Sheldon. He's their big man. Now a floater is no good. Sheldon gets the ball back. Blackaby wanted the over the, uh, over the back, but he's going to miss that off the backboard. Now Langley has it up to Whitlow. Mitchell going to take it up the floor. He'll slow it down and get it off to Wagner. So Anderson with their second possession at 0-0. Blackaby with a good feed. That's blocked away. He had Whitlow underneath the basket. Now here come the Eagles. The Eagles a much more athletic team than the Trojans. Now driving in is Dempsey. He'll pull it back. Francis defending. Now into the corner for number two, Dove. Dove kills his dribble outside. He gets it off to Hubbard. Now there's Hubbard with it way outside. He's going to go right at Whitlow. Crossing over. Kills his dribble. Now goes back across to Samuel Brandon. They get it inside of the big man. Brandon going to come around the screen. He'll pull up from the elbow. Wagner with great defense. And that's another shot way off for New Caney in the early going. Here comes Blackerby taking his time into the front court. Gets it off to Francis. Jack can attack the paint. Kicks it to Wagner in the corner. He'll take a dribble inside. Dumps it off to Langley. Naked to put it on the floor. Loses it. Back outside for Whitlow. Mitchell driving to the basket. Floater is good. We talked about that last game. Mitchell Whitlow likes to go to that floater. And he's pretty automatic with it. And Anderson is going to open the scoring up in this one. It is two to nothing. So our first two minutes gone. Only one basket. Much like in the first round, it was a little bit of a defensive struggle early for Anderson. Here's Dove. Now outside, Dempsey going to fire away. That's an air ball and saved right into the hands of Brandon. He misses the layup. Langley with a great, re uh, great box out of the big man Sheldon and a late, late signal. But I thought they were going to get Langley on it, and I was about to get upset. But thankfully, I don't have to, as it was correctly called on Braden Sheldon. Langley had position, and Sheldon just tried to go over him. And I'm sure he's used to being able to do that. He's six foot seven. Anderson breaking the press, nearly taken away. It's knocked out of bounds off the hands of Braden Sheldon, and it will stay here. A risky pass there from Wagner. Francis with it well on the perimeter. Langley going to set his feet for this screen. Now Jack splits the double team, takes it to the cup, lays it up, and that's a blocking foul. So two quick fouls on the big man Sheldon. And that's, uh, that's basically what you have to do when you have a guy that big you just, and, and you don't really have anyone to, to match up with him. You just go and try and take him out. So now they'll have to sub him out. Kamar Dove, a junior, going to come off the bench here for New Caney. As, what's the call here? Pointing at the official. Maybe like a, 
and we're not going to get word. Um, he didn't signal the technical. He blew the whistle and pointed at the coach. But here's the first free throw for Francis. Jackie knocks it down. So a better start here for the Trojans. Uh, Sheldon's going to have to hit the bench, a senior. Anderson vacating the lane, just letting them rebound it if uh, they miss. But Jack is going to do a whole lot of that from the free throw line. He does two for two on his first two of the game. Anderson with a four-point lead to start. Two for Whitlow, two for Francis. Now back on the wing. Out there with it is Joey Hubbard. Hubbard gets it back out to Dove, who's into the game. Now Dempsey going to come up firing, and he knocks it down. Missed his first, makes his second, cuts it to a one-point game. And now here's Mitchell Whitlow taking it up. Passes it ahead to Blackerby. Blackerby off to Langley. Nate going to take it to the basket. Takes a bump. Gets it to go. Nate Langley strong to the basket. And without that big presence down there, Anderson ready to attack. Now here comes Dempsey. He likes to shoot him. He takes it into Whitlow. Kills his dribble, and that's going to be a traveling violation. Anderson ball. I like my little my little cubby hole that I have, my little press box, but don't get to feed off the, uh, the the vibes in the gym. It's behind a closed door, so it's a little quiet in here. But I can hear myself, which is nice. I can't always do that. Now here's Francis. Anderson going to have a hard time beating the press, and they turn it over for the first time today. And Wagner going to knock that down, gets it back. Now back outside, Brandon going to fire away from three. That's way off. Anderson comes away with the rebound. It's Jack Francis. So two team fouls. For New Caney, just one for the Trojans on the illegal screen from Langley. So here's Wagner, loses it. That's going to be thrown off the knee, gets it back, tries to save it. He can't. And now the press a little too much for Anderson. Getting some taste of their own medicine. Eurostep layup is good for Joey Hubbard. His first make, it's 5-6. to six. Now Jack trapped in the corner, gets it ahead to Blackerby. Now off to Whitlow, and Anderson out and running. Whitlow going to take it all the way to the cup, lays it up, gets it to go. Mitchell Whitlow coast to coast. He's always good at reading the court. I gotta make sure my scoreboard's updated. As here's Dempsey uh, chased off the line. Blackerby got him, and now Langley in on the steal. Passes ahead to Whitlow. Now up ahead to Francis. Jack, fast break to Bennett Blackerby, and that's gotta be a goal ten. It's gotta, yeah, it is. That went off the backboard before the block was made. So Bennett Blackerby gonna get his first deuce of the game, and now it is ten to five, Anderson. We'll keep it on the floor. A lot of substitutions in the game now for New Caney. Number 11, Nate Flowers into the game. Number 5, Drayvon Wilson into the game. So now... Mitchell Whitlow, team high of 4, Francis Blackerby and Langley all have a deuce. Now bringing the ball up is going to be number 23, Jordan Brown also into the game. Bazarian and Dale in for Anderson. There's Wilson all the way around, loses it. Blackerby's the one that comes up with it. Now Bennett crosses behind, and Anderson clears it away. Five-point lead for them halfway through the first three, yeah, 35 ish to be more, uh, be more precise there. As here's Blackerby, dribbles it in, loses, or rather takes the bump and passes it off to Bazarian. Now it's a skip pass all the way across to Jack Francis. Now Anderson going to take a little breath and slow it down. Three and a half to play in the first quarter. They get it up top to Dale. Dale stuck, going to have to put it on the floor, looking for Blackerby around the screen. They get it off to Jack Francis. Jack and a dribble to his right, has a lane to the bucket, takes it all the way in, can't get it to go, hits the floor. Now bringing the ball up is New Caney. They lose it, ooh, nearly another turnover for the Eagles, but instead it's Drayvon Wilson for the Eagles. Back out for Dove, and hands it off to Brown. Brown going to take it in, Whitlow got a hand on it, and the layup's going to be no good. Anderson forcing some misses here early as Whitlow lobs it ahead to Blackerby. Anderson struggling with this press right now, as that's going to be a foul on the uh, aggressive defense as Coach Pittsburgh not happy with the way his team is breaking the press here early. But Anderson getting some lucky rolls on the offensive end, or rather the defensive end. Uh, some of these new Caney looks at the basket that they're getting have been very good, and they just haven't been able to convert. Now Anderson with some substitutions of their own. Langley back in, Blackerby out, Whitlow out. So it's Bazarian, Dale, Langley, Francis, and Wagner. Mike trying to find somewhere to go with it, and he'll just have to get it to Jack, and Jack does a good job keeping his feet uh, on the right side of the line, although on the inbounds, it's fine. You get across to Bazarian. Ben going to take a dribble and do a little push. That's going to be no good. Rebound taken away. Knocked out of bounds. And they're going to say off of Langley. Nate felt pretty confident that was off of the Eagles, but can't get that whistle there. So instead, it'll be Eagles basketball. They trail it by five. Dylan Dempsey, who's on the bench right now, leads them with a three. Joey Hubbard, also on the bench. Number one is the other scorer in that game. So Anderson um, going... 
three starters, two bench players right now, and that's going to be a bump. Ben, great defense, and that's going to be another turnover. Bazarian wisely pulls it back. He turned over Drayvon Wilson, and now it's a pass off to Ben. Ben going to drive in, kick to the corner for Francis, and now Ben will have to relocate. Jack into Langley in the high post. Nate going to put it on the floor, takes it in, lays it up, can't get it to go. That's some uh, heavy contact. Is Anderson going to double, and, oh, they're going to get a foul there on Jack Francis on the rip through from Kamar Dove. Well, we've got Kendall and Kamar Dove. 15 and at number two, respectively. I don't know if they're related, but um, <laughs> one can probably assume because they are both juniors on the same basketball team. Now ready to check back in is Samuel Brandon. He'll be in for Dove. So now no Dove on the court. DJ Lewis is going to be the one to bring it up. For the New Caney Eagles, it's still 10 to 5, under two minutes to play here in the first quarter. Lewis going to take it all the way to the basket, takes the bump, and ooh, they're going to get Whitlow there. Looked like decent defense from the Trojans there, but he can't get the whistle. Now ready to shoot is DJ Lewis, who's just checked in. Three team fouls apiece. Because Lewis is sophomore, he's a smaller guard. So the first no good for Lewis. It's all in all maybe a good foul, but you never want foul trouble on your players. Second free throw, also going to be no good. Looked short out of his hand, and it was. Now a lob ahead for Jack. Jack going to slow it down. I think that's the good call. He's going to get doubled there on the sideline. Leaves Wagner open to attack the paint. Dishes it off to Dale. Freddie takes a bump. Lays it up, lays it in. Some tough contact and a nice lay-in from Fred Dale. They're not calling a whole lot of that uh, down low. I'm fine with it if you just want to let him play. But three team fouls apiece. Anderson with a seven-point lead. Fred Dale, the first bench point of the game for the Anderson Trojans. Now there's uh, DJ Lewis once again with it outside. He's taking his time on the perimeter. Under a minute and a half to play here in the first quarter. Driving in is Jordan Brown. He's going to take it right at Wagner. Wagner hands straight up. And that's going to be a travel going against New Caney. Anderson playing some stifling defense early as they lead it 12-5. to The New Caney starters getting ready to check back into the game, including Brayden Sheldon, who picked up those two early fouls. So I say go right at that kid. 12-5 to for Anderson right now. One minute, 15 seconds, and the press is coming. Wagner stuck in the corner, loses it, and that's going to be another Trojan turnover into the corner, a wide-open triple. And that's, whoa, I'm not sure what happened there, but Kendall Dove is there on the putback. So this New Caney team is missing a lot of, of threes in, in a weird way here early. This here's Francis, crosses over, he's going to be doubled. Is he going to get him for a double dribble? Oh, looked like it was knocked out of his hands, but no, Anderson right now can't figure out the press. And for a team that's so good at the press, it's kind of hard to see. Pittsburgh not pleased with his team right now. Uh, on the offensive end, just too many turnovers. That was the story of the Connolly game. Right now, Anderson, that's what's uh, keeping them in the game, is here is number two, Kendall Dove, with it outside, who just got the putback. Now, here's the big man streaking to the basket, and he finally gets his first make. That's Braden Sheldon. So now that down to a three-point game for Anderson. Wagner up ahead for Blackerby. Bennett going to drive in. He takes a hit. Dale going to take it inside, and that's blocked. Fred's going to get his own rebound. That's going to be knocked out of bounds, and it's going to go the other direction. So now a 12-9 game, they're going to get Page. They're going to get Whitlow out of the game for Colin Page. So now 32 seconds remain. Anderson with a three-point lead. Had it up to seven a little bit ago as there's Colin Page. Out there causing some havoc. There's Kendall Dove with it. Still not quite sure who's going to be the guy that uh, is going to score a lot of the points here. Because there's Brandon in the corner. He's going to try a three, and he's going to can it after missing his first very badly. So that's a tie game, 12 seconds left. Anderson still can't solve this press. Wagner loses it, gets it back, throws it out of bounds off of an Eagles player, and he hit Brandon in the face. So now just seven seconds left. Anderson's got to get it the length of the court, and they just can't solve this right now. They don't want to get it into the corner. Jack's got to go somewhere with it, finds Wagner. 
Wagner going to rifle it ahead. There's Colin Page going to take it right at the big man. That's going to be blocked. Colin gets it back, throws it in, and that's going to go out of bounds off of Colin Page. As right now, the defense for the Eagles is stifling. It's a tie game. And it should remain tied as we only have 1.9 se uh, seconds left in the quarter. So we might take our first break after this. As they're just going to pass it in, Fred Dale going to get a hand on that. He's going to fire away. That shouldn't count, and uh, he missed. So, after one, New Caney comes all the way back from a seven-point deficit to tie it. Anderson uh, has no, absolutely no answer for this uh, Eagles press right now. Is they're just getting a turnover whenever they want to uh, against Anderson, and that's the reason it's such a close game. Anderson defending well. Uh, they're scoring well when they get the ball, but they haven't been able to score. They keep turning it over. They haven't gotten shots up. I'd like to see the uh, the shot at the field goal attempt in that quarter. I imagine Anderson kept it pretty low. But with that, we're going to go ahead and take our first break on the broadcast. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to Anderson Basketball tonight. You're listening to UIL Playoffs. Actually, you know what? We'll just keep it here. I'll talk long enough. Uh, team's coming out back on the court. It will be New Caney Basketball. But no one really... Um, no one really caring right now for either team. Everybody on the floor except for Mitchell Whitlow, who has scored, only has scored once. But Anderson's going to need to solve that press. So here are the Eagles to get started. Into the corner for Brandon. He's going to come around, going to take it all the way in, dishes it off, but he's stuck under the basket, and he's going to travel. That's going to go against Kendall Dove. That's another travel against him. But, of course, here come the Eagles, ready to press. Whitlow has it, looking for somewhere to go. Gets it into Langley. Nate going to find Whitlow and get him out running. Back to Francis, and they kind of kill it. Now back for Whitlow. He's got it up ahead. Now he's going to take it all the way to the basket, and he's going to be stripped headed to the line, but it's going to be a foul. Two more free throws for the Anderson Trojans. That's four team fouls against New Caney. First 15 gone in the uh, first, or second quarter, excuse me. Coach Pitt going <laughs> to get the team gathered over there to talk through, um, I assume, to talk about this press. Mitchell's first rattles around and falls, so he's got five points to lead the Trojans. Mitchell scoring a lot here in the playoffs. A little inconsistent um, from a scoring standpoint throughout the regular season, but he's been good here. Mitch has six. Okay. Having to do some adjustments on the fly here. This here's New Caney driving all the way in is Dempsey, and that's going to be another travel. He got he Wagner's been staying in front of him. He kind of slid back, um, and yeah, it's a travel. So Anderson with the the ball now in the lead. We're able to get past the press last time. Let's see if they can get consistent with it. Francis crosses over, not as aggressive with it here at the beginning of the second. Whitlow comes. Up to set the screen, gets the ball from Francis. He's going to take it to the right, steps back. Now dishes it off to the point guard. Some aggressive defense here early. New Caney as Wagner drives in, kills his dribble. Lucky that wasn't called a travel, but he kept his footing. Langley steps back for the three. No good. Rebound long to Jack Francis. He loses it, gets it back. Going to, ooh, some tough spacing here. Is Jack going to, ooh, just able to get it off to Wagner. Now here's a pass ahead to Francis. Now he'll have a three on two. Jack all the way to the basket, lays it up, and that's going to be a foul on the floor. Jack got it to go, but... They'll keep it down on the floor. I think that's the right call. So now 14-12, Anderson still with the ball. Wagner gets it into Francis. That's going to be tapped out of bounds off of number two, Kendall Dove. So Wagner with another chance to inbound it. They're going to look for Francis underneath. Jack doesn't have it. They get it back out for Langley. Langley now the one with it on the perimeter. He's facing the defense from number 15, Kamar Dove. Now there's Jack with Wagner out on the perimeter. Brandon defending Wagner. Brandon has been just all over whoever he's guarding. As there's Langley, splits the double, takes it to the cup, lays it up. Can't get it to go through a lot of contact. And now here's Kendall Dove coming the other way. Slows it down off the defense from Francis. Two-point lead for the Trojans. Now with it, number four is Dylan Dempsey, the guy who hit their first basket. And there is Joey Hubbard. Two points in the game for him. Langley out to switch on. 
Hubbard going to drive in, hop step, turns, spins, a little awkward jumper, can't get it to fall. Blackaby boxes out, Langley gets the rebound, and here come the Anderson Trojans. Wagner gets it to Whitlow, he has a chance to the basket. That's blocked, another one for New Caney, but they're finally going to get Samuel Brandon on a foul. He's been hounding some Anderson players. Because New Caney has all the energy in the world. That's their last foul to give, so Anderson will be in the bonus going forward. This is a shooting foul, so Mitchell will have two. First free throw is up. First free throw, nothing but the bottom for Mitchell Whitlow. He's got seven already. Brandon will stay out there. Mitchell, once again. New Caney is still scoreless here in the second quarter. Six minutes to play. But we've had, uh, it's been a game of runs. Each team will score four or six in a row, and then the other team will go back, right back with that. Plea Anderson is able to get some separation here as they uh, continue to play, but there's Kendall Dove on the perimeter. He's going to go right at Francis. Going to pull up. Can't get it to go. Rebound goes to Armour. Lucky that Kamar Dove wasn't called for a foul there. As here comes Mike Wagner. He's coming up, turns around. Doesn't use the screen, but a beautiful find to Armour, who's missing the shot at the layup. Now coming up the court is Dove. Dove loses it off the hands of Wagner and out of bounds. It's been a frantic game. But Anderson has the lead. New Caney has the ball. They trail by four. Kendall Dove, the one to inbound it. And they get Braden Sheldon back into the game. The big man, Campbell Duncan, trying his best to face him up. Nowhere to go with it. They just have to lob it into the big man. Not much you can really do about that. Now driving in is Hubbard all the way to the cup. Can't get it to go. New Caney can't uh, get a lot to fall here early. As there's Blackaby passes it ahead to Wagner and up ahead to Armour. Now Jack. Jack steps it to the baseline. Looks off the defender. Knocks it down from the short corner. Jack Francis just his second make of the ball game. He's got four. Pushes it back to a six-point lead for the Anderson Trojans. Now back out on the perimeter with it is Dylan Dempsey. Capable three-point shooters. There's Brandon going to come up. That's going to be an air ball as Blackaby nearly loses it, and that goes off the backboard, and that, yeah, it's going to be out on Wagner. Anderson just couldn't quite get the bounce. They had a great chance at it, but weren't able to come away. Instead, it'll be New Caney basketball under here once again. Five minutes left here in the opening half. Checking in now is Jordan Brown. They will get Dylan Dempsey out. And Kendall Dove will stay in, but they've just moved him off of the inbound passing position role. And now they have to pass it in. Ooh, Bennett Blackerby, he, he had his head the other way. But here comes Dove to the basket, bumps off Bennett. Bennett goes up strong to block it, and they're going to get him for a foul. Dove initiated the contact, and then when Blackerby got a hand in there, they called the foul. But now Dove will head to the line for some free throws. That's the fourth team foul going against the Anderson Trojans. Getting ready to check in now is Nate Flowers and Trayvon Wilson for the Eagles. But here's Dove, he heads to the line. First free throw is no good. Right now, New Caney really struggling um, just with putting the ball in the basket. They've missed uh, outside shots, they've missed layups, and now they're missing free throws here. I believe they are 0 for 3 on the game in free throws. Let's see if he can make it 1 for 4, and he can't. So nothing doing on that possession for New Caney. Can't come up empty like that too often. Black could be going to catch and shoot. That's no good. Well off. That's going to be batted out of bounds. This should be Anderson ball. Ooh, no. The official all the way at half court made the call. It's a tough break for Anderson, but it's been one of those games. Just uh, each team probably thinks that they're getting the raw end of the whistle. It's one of those. Because uh, the whistle's been blown a lot tonight. But now out with it on the perimeter is Drayvon Wilson still scoreless. They get it into the post for Sheldon, the big man, and that's intercepted by Bennett Blackaby. He's going to push it ahead, and luckily uh, Anderson not going to have to worry about that as that's knocked out of bounds. A little risky on the pass from Bennett, but kind of like the idea, just maybe not, uh, <laughs> maybe not in that spot. Colin Page time. Mitchell Whitlow time. I don't want to sell him short. He's been excellent today. Eight points. Leads the Trojans. Next closest player is Jack Francis with four. Mike Wagner still the uh, the only starter 
who has not scored. They get it into Whitlow. Now Mitchell back outside for his point guard. Now back to Whitlow. They're leaving him open. He's going to take it, and the long arms of New Caney are going to result in the block, and that's going to go out of bounds off the rebound. Page very lucky he wasn't. Um, in fact, I'm not sure how he wasn't called for a loose ball foul there, but it's really hard to get a shot off over Sheldon. Anderson hasn't seen a player with that kind of size and that kind of mobility a lot uh, all the year. As we have a substitution, Black will be going to get checked out. So it'll be Page and Dale along with Francis and Whitlow and uh, Wagner there to inbound it. 4.25 left in the quarter. They get it out for Francis. Screen comes from Dale. Going to send Dale down to the block. Page going to head back out to the wing. Jack Francis going to drive in. Gets his man off of him. Going to pull up from the uh, free throw line and he can't hit it. Rebound goes to Nate Flowers. Flowers pushing ahead. Dale tries to get the steal. And now heading all the way to the basket. Laying up. No good. Wagner again with some excellent defense. Page with a good board. Colin ahead of steam. He's coming down the court. Loses it. And that's going to go out of bounds off of his own foot. He took a bump from behind and they're just, uh, just letting him play here today for the most part. So 18-12, four minutes to play. I imagine that, that New Caney's got to get hot at some point. Connolly got really hot there in the third quarter. But here's DJ Lewis taking the ball up. Gets it off to number five, Drayvon Wilson. Wilson into the corner. There's Brown. They're looking for the big man. They got it to Sheldon. Dale, and that's going to be a little too high, but Lewis comes down with it. And Lewis going to drive in. Wagner spins, and Lucky wasn't called for a travel. Back out to Wilson, now back out to Brown. Brown takes it to his left, pushes off of Wagner, lays it up, and that's going to be on... Another travel. I thought it was going to be an offensive foul, but just the same. Jordan Brown picks up the turnover. Half an hour into the game. We're a quarter and a half gone. Pacing of this one's been <laughs> absurd. Start, stop, start, stop. This here's Wagner with the number 11. Nate Flowers defending him. Mike. Got to be careful with it. So here's Dale. And who's the foul? It's going to be against New Caney. A, uh, a loose ball foul. They're going to get Flowers getting a little too physical on Mike Wagner. So Mike steps to the line for a one and one. Got to knock down the front end. Wagner knocks it down. That's his first point of the game. He struggled with his form uh, towards the end of the season at times. But New Caney will call a timeout, so we will have it right after this. Uh, this break. I'm going to go ahead and just take the break with them. It's just going to be 30 seconds. We will be right back. Thank you, thank you for tuning in to the UIL playoffs. It's Anderson basketball. They lead it. 19-12. to 12. Wagner will have another free throw right after this. Five Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts. But did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. So Mike Wagner back to the line. He'll just have one here as they call the timeout. Anderson still with a couple of fouls to give. 319 remain in the half. Mike Wagner goes two for two. So right now, New Caney uh, is over on their free throws, and Anderson is perfect. And that's, uh, that's a big story as to why the score, the score is what it is. It's 20 to 12. New Caney is struggling scoring. And there's another seal for Colin Page. Wagner leaks it up to Francis. Couldn't get him on the money. So Jack going to dribble through and just reset the possession. Now under three minutes to play here in the opening half. Jack going to take it right past Lewis, crosses over. He's got the size and the speed on him. Now back into Page in the corner. Colin looking for somewhere to go, gets it back outside to Wagner. Wagner being closely defended, puts the ball on the floor, heads to the right side, hand off to Francis. Back in the corner for Wagner, and they're going to get a legal screen on Dale. An illegal screen, excuse me. That's the second illegal screen of the Trojans so far in this game as they will check in Dylan Dempsey back into the game, as well as Braden Sheldon. Done a good job of not um, letting Sheldon pick up another foul, as he has been limited in much of this first half. There's Page playing the role of instigator, defending Dempsey as he brings it up the court. 
as Page tries to get the interception. Instead, they get it inside. Jack with the big block, and oh, a foul call. Is that going to be on Francis? Look like Jack, mm, they're going to get Jack on that. Look like a good block from here. But that'll send Drayvon Wilson to the line, a sophomore. It's hard to tell um, exactly what the, the what foul is and isn't, as that's another missed free throw from the Eagles. Because sometimes they let it go, sometimes they don't. Because they'll get Page out of the game for Blackerby, and they'll get Armour into the game for Dale. So Derek getting some run here early. Anderson favoring a little bit more size. As Langley's been on the bench here for a while in the second quarter. 2.31 to play. That's another missed free throw and a good board from the Trojans. Pass ahead, and that's going to be knocked away. It's Brandon once again uh, with the active hands. Anderson got to be wary of those passes because it'll be Whitlow to inbound it, and he does. Brandon comes up on Wagner. Jack going to put it back on the floor, wait till the double comes, and then gets it to Wagner. Now here's Armour. Derek going to drive in, pulls it back, dishes it off to Mike, got the big man out of the frame, and instead it's going to be a three-pointer for Blackerby. Knocks it down. Bennett Blackerby extending his range. Anderson needs that. Bennett Blackerby up to five points. The Trojan lead is up to 11. Now two minutes left here in the first half. Dempsey brings it up for the Eagles. They have still yet to score in this quarter. Here's Wilson. Kicks it outside for Dempsey. He can shoot it. He'll try it. And he hits it. That's a big basket for New Caney, who's starting to slip for a little bit. But now Anderson, they just got to not turn it over. And they just have to get shots at the basket. Lobs it up to Whitlow. Mitchell going to put it on the floor. He takes it to the right side. Off the armor. Up to Jack. Jack going to settle into it. Off the dribble three. Jack Francis. So back to back to back threes for each team. Blackerby hit one, Dempsey hit one, Francis hits one, so we're back to where we started. New Caney with just one make on the entire quarter, and you just saw it. It's 26 to 15, Anderson with an 11 point lead, just a 30 second timeout, but we'll go ahead and take it nonetheless. We'll be right back. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEBYPE.com. Page back in for Anderson. Playing those passing lanes. Lob it back across to Hubbard. Hubbard skips into the corner for Brandon. Brandon going to relocate and try it again. Can't hit it too short. New Caney struggling from the field mightily today. Wagner bringing it up. Goes to his right. Goes behind the back. Good defense there from Hubbard to slow him down. Double comes. And they're selling out hard on that. They dish it to Page. Page is going to take it in. And that's going to be a charge. Yep. Uh, Sheldon was set up there for, for a good little while. I think that's the right call. Uh, Coach Pitt doesn't like it, but um, I feel like his feet were set. So now just a minute to play. Goes back across to Dempsey. Wagner pokes it away, and they'll get Mike. Oh. <laughs> so some, some tough whistles there for the Trojans, but that's going to send uh, an eagle to the line. It's a one-and-one. One. Francis getting ready to check back in along with Langley, so Armour and... Uh, Page going to hit the bench, and it starters back out on, onto the court for Anderson. They have a minute left. As the way that um, New Caney plays defense, they force a lot of turnovers, but then uh, as a result of how much they're flying around, they can be out of position. That is the first made free throw of the game, and it goes to Kendall Dove. So, so you'll see it. They'll, you'll, they'll get the turnovers, but uh, you'll get some open looks for Anderson as they're subbing Braden Shelton out um, in and out as often as they can. They do not want him to pick up a third foul before the half. And they've done a good job. It doesn't look like he will. So now here's a free throw. And that's going to be no good. So one for two is all they can uh, get. This here's Whitlow back across for Jack. Jack in a wait. See, like a triple is coming. <laughs> now Wagner lobs it ahead. Langley, and that's going to be intercepted by Brandon. He's been... In, he's just been really tough on Wagner here today. So that's going to be another turnover inside. Wagner gets it. Gets it off to Langley. Now Nate with a chance. Lobs it ahead to Jack Francis. He'll wait. 
and lose it, but he'll get it back outside for Whitlow. Mitchell gets it back to Francis. Now 30 seconds remain. Jack got a man onto the floor, and now Hughes Wagner, and he'll take a breath. See, this is, uh, they're just are frantic. They're flying all over the place on defense. So here's Francis, gets it up to Whitlow. Now Anderson will slow it down for the final 15 seconds of the quarter. Back outside for Jack. And Dempsey's going to come up and try to take it away. Jack spins off of him, takes it to the basket. He gets stuck again, back out for Francis. Jack going to put it on the floor into the corner. Gets baseline, dishes it off to Langley. He takes a hit, can't get it to go, but a foul called. So Langley will head to the line for two after that. I don't even know what. <laughs> but with 1.71 remaining, Anderson will have two more shots at the rim. Nate Langley, quiet here in the first half, just two after his big uh, game against Connolly, 16 points in that one, but has a chance to tack on a couple more here. And that looks short out of his hands as well, so that's going to fall off no good. Nate Langley with a chance for one more here. Colin Page getting ready to check in, but it's going to be dependent on whether Nate makes it or not. But either way, uh, New Caney, if, if he misses, they'll have to catch and go full court as Nate makes the second. So three points at the half for Nate Langley. They'll get Page in, they'll get Langley out. 1.71, can't allow a good, clean look. Let him catch it in the backcourt if you have to. Or uh, try, that's what you're going to try and force him to. Here's Dove inbounding, looking, throws it in, and that's going to be out of bounds, so Anderson will have a chance at it. They let way too much time run off the clock. They let a whole second, 1.1 seconds run off the clock, so now Anderson is going to have to catch and shoot. Is now Langley going to check in? Wagner, I imagine they'll try and get this to Francis or Blackerby. Page going to check out. Coach Pitt wants them to stick some more time on the clock, but I don't think they will. So it should just be a catch-and-shoot opportunity for the Anderson Trojans. And Brandon going to be the one sticking to Blackerby, so you know they've read the scouting report on Bennett. Bennett looking to get open, and that's going to be knocked out of bounds. And it will be off of Wagner, but that wastes another point three. So Anderson can't get a look. And it will be New Caney basketball. Oh, they've got to get set. They've got to get set. Okay. <laughs> Say New Caney had a wide open lane to the basket if Anderson wasn't aware it's not their ball anymore. So that one was knocked out of bounds. Uh, Wagner tried to throw it in. It was knocked out of bounds off of his own head. So Wagner won't get a chance. As Hubbard, uh, they're just going to try and throw that in. I don't think anyone touched that. I don't think anybody touched that. Can you call a timeout to advance? Now it's going to be Anderson ball again from the same spot. So now Anderson with a chance, looking for... Oh, okay, never mind, never mind. <laughs> what a weird ending to a half. Pass in, and that's going to be intercepted, and that is how we will end it. Wagner just trying to throw something in there. Anderson with the lead. Much, uh, much more comfortable half offensively once Anderson got a, a, a handle on some of those uh, those full court presses there from the Eagles. But we have halftime. Anderson leads it 27 to 16 off a great outing so far for Mitchell Whitlow. Jack Francis also tallying seven. Blackerby knocked in a three late in the half with five. Nate Langley just with three. Wagner and Dale also with two. For New Caney, Dylan Dempsey, uh, he's knocked in a pair of threes. Samuel Brandon knocked in a three. Hubbard, Dove, and Sheldon all have knocked in a two, but Dove went one for two from the line, so it's Dempsey with six, Brandon and Dove with three, Hubbard and Sheldon both with two. Anderson forces New Caney to, uh, once again, I wish I got live stats at the high school level. I, I'm always very interested in, in, in seeing stuff like that, but uh, <laughs> a record for worst first half field goal to, uh, percentage. I forgot the word percentage for way too long but uh, they pretty much shut them down. The, the, their three-point percentage is probably all right, but from the field, Anderson just absolutely locking New Caney down. They, they've not been able to find anything. So, you know, in the second half, they're going to be able to, <laughs> to just hit everything. But the Trojan defense was good. The New Caney defense was good, but Anderson um, able to take advantage of some of the, the gaps in the New Caney press. And now they lead it 27 to 16. We're going to go ahead and send it to the break for uh, halftime here for a little while. 8, 40, uh, eight minutes, 40 seconds still remain in halftime, so we'll go ahead and take a quick break, come back, and we'll have a little more coverage 
before we get started with the second half. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the broadcast tonight. I want to remind you if Anderson is able to keep it going here and keep it going all the way throughout the season, that you are not going to want to miss the boys UIL basketball state championships starting Thursday, March 10th at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. Ticket information and more can be found at UILTexas.org. That is UILTexas.org. I'll never forget the day I decided to go out for the football team. Mr. Banks, the JV football coach and my history teacher, asked me to stay after class. I thought I was in trouble. He said, hey, Darius, have you thought about going out for football? I think you'd be great. Fact is, I never played football. Fact is, I never had anyone tell me I'd be great at something. So, with no experience at all, I signed up. And a week later, I padded up and was running drills on the field. I never was great, but playing high school sports was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I was accepted by my teammates, and I learned that when someone believes in you, you can believe in yourself. Encourage a student you know to take part in a high school sport. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. What does the 50th anniversary of Title IX mean? It means I'm valued, I'm empowered, I can do anything. It means I'll pave the way for every girl who plays high school sports in the future, just like every female student, coach, official, and administrator blazes the trail for me. Because every student deserves the opportunity to play. Encourage girls you know to participate in Texas high school sports. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipe, a game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Texas. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. I'll never forget the day I decided to go out for the football team. Mr. Banks, the JV football coach and my history teacher, asked me to stay after class. I thought I was in trouble. He said, hey, Darius, have you thought about going out for football? I think you'd be great. Fact is, I never played football. Fact is, I never had anyone tell me I'd be great at something. So, with no experience at all, I signed up. And a week later, I padded up and was running drills on the field. I never was great, but playing high school sports was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I was accepted by my teammates, and I learned that when someone believes in you, you can believe in yourself. Encourage a student you know to take part in a high school sport. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. 
What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vipe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Interested in Vipe Campus? Vipe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vipe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vipe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vite Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Back in it. Anderson leads it by 11 at the half. Trojans looking to make it three years in a row. They would be district, uh, or excuse me, area champions here. They've got an 11-point lead against a new Caney team that really struggled offensively in the first half. Only 16 points. They only scored two in the entire second quarter. So Anderson really keeping the defense strong and keeping the defense alive. Connolly really came out and punched Anderson in the mouth in the third quarter of last game. So Anderson, imagine, uh, <laughs> look to try and mitigate that as they've been so good in third quarters for most of this season. Trojans gotten some shots up. Hopefully they can they can knock down some shots on this side of the court as New Caney uh, really struggled from outside in uh, uh, getting shots to go in the basket. So maybe it's uh, <laughs> maybe they've got a, a a bent rim over here or something, or maybe they just were cold. But it will be Anderson basketball to start the half. They lead it by 11. So a good chance for Anderson to tack on two more before New Caney even touches the ball. Same starters in the game now for the Eagles. Same thing for the Trojans. Jack Francis, 14, or excuse me, seven points in the half, 14 points against Connolly. Seven points in the first half for Jack, eight points in the first half for Mitchell Whitlow. There's a man himself, Mitchell Whitlow, getting ready to throw the ball in. As New Caney not electing to, uh, to come with heavy pressure on this first possession. But now here it comes. Here's Hubbard. And Brandon going to be coming up to deal with it as well. As That's too long as he wanted Langley to dive to the basket. And Nate was not on the same page. So a bad turnover to start the half for the Anderson Trojans in back-to-back -back games. Excuse me, the second half. But there's Hubbard with it out of the wing. Whitlow defending. Mitchell stays with him. They get it into Sheldon. Now a skip across court. Dempsey going to drive in. Loses it. Wagner just took it right away. Mike with a chance to get out and running. Beautiful feed to Blackerby. Blackerby going to get the layup on the other end. And that's a deuce for Bennett. He's up to seven points. A good way to get him going here in the second half. So two easy ones for Bennett. There's Dempsey. Had it plucked last time. Here's Hubbard on the wing. Now they get it into Brandon. Three points in the first half for him. Samuel Brandon. Uh, just a uh, just a defensive menace as that's a block from Langley. Not sure that's not a foul on Brandon. Is Blackerby going to take it in? Loses it going up. As Langley took a took a bump there from Brandon, but no whistle. So it'll be the Eagles the other way. So two turnovers are already in the half for Anderson. Here's Dempsey. Back out for Brandon. Three points in the first half, as we mentioned, but he has been all over it defensively. 
He'll take it to the left wing and try and go right at Francis. Jack stays with him and forces the miss. Whitlow comes away with it. Now Jack Francis out and running. He'll take it in right at Hubbard. Langley sets the screen. Jack going to get to his spot. Can't knock it down. Jack loves that short corner jumper. But here's Dempsey coming through. Francis picks him up, and he'll slow it down. Now Wagner will switch on to him. Six points in the first half. That's the most for any eagle. That's Dylan Dempsey, number four, the junior. There's Hubbard with it. He's going to drive in. Kicks it right into the hands of Wagner. Mike not going to try and run it. He don't have the numbers. But Wagner tried to dish it off the Blackerby, and that's another Trojan turnover. Pass ahead. That's going to be not sure how Wagner didn't get a hand on that, but bad break as Kendall Dove going to get an easy layup. So each team with two here in the half. Now Blackerby left wide open. He might just settle in for the three. He will. In and out. Is There's Willow on the follow. Can't get it. And that's a rebound going to Sheldon. As here comes Dempsey screaming into the front court all the way to the cup. Blackaby defending, and that gets the roll. So now New Caney already starting off with some better offense. Anderson has to stop turning the ball over. So here's Whitlow up ahead to Wagner. Mike going to take it all the way into the cup. Gets around the defender, gets it to go. Not sure how Wagner knocked that down, but that's Mike Wagner's first make from the floor. He has four points. So all starters in the scoring column for the Trojans. They lead it 31-20. to with five minutes and a half remaining here in the third quarter. Brandon coming around. He'll pull up from the elbow. That's no good. Rebound goes strong to Whitlow. Now a lob ahead. Here's Jack Francis. And I'm not sure how Brandon got a hand on that, but Jack had a run out. As we will have a timeout for New Caney. Believe it's uh, for New Caney. So I think the Eagles uh, called the timeout after the, the back there. So Anderson with just... Well, we'll just keep it back at an 11-point lead, so two baskets apiece. But Anderson can't stop. Well, neither of the teams really can stop turning it over, but I like it when New Caney turns it over. So that's really the main difference. So now Bennett Blackaby up to seven. Mike Wagner up to four. He ties Francis, who also has seven. Bennett does. And Mitchell Whitlow still with eight. Scoreless in the second half. So... This third quarter moving by pretty quickly as, as we've had a lot of run and gun and not a lot of shots on the basket, but we had a full timeout on the court, but we'll just go ahead and keep it here at this point. Anderson, 31-20. to 20. Dylan Dempsey, eight points for the Eagles. Kendall Dove, five points for the Eagles. It will be Eagle basketball, the team in black, and it will be Dove to inbound. They've got some substitutions, though. Into the game now is Nate Flowers once again. Looking to get it into Wilson, and they do. Wagner picking up. They get it back to Dempsey. Likes the deep three, but Langley up and defending. Going to hand it off to Dove. So he doesn't want to take advantage of the mismatch there, but Nate usually pretty good out on the perimeter. There's Wilson looking for somewhere to go with it. They get it to Dove. Shot from the elbow is no good. Rebound batted away, and that's going to go out of bounds off of Anderson. Sheldon uh, was the one to slap at it. As they're letting him have a lot of free reign to be physical down underneath the basket here tonight. This year's Dove. They get it into the big man. He faces up, kicks to the corner. They left Dempsey open, and he can't make him pay this time, but the ball goes to Whitlow. Whitlow takes a bump, gets it to Wagner. Mike now stuck with it, gets it back, and this is going to be a foul going against New Caney. I imagine this will be against Flowers. Yeah, they're with Flowers on it. I think Dove was right to complain, but Flowers wasn't. Dove thought it was on him. So with Anderson Ball, they still have an 11-point lead. We are nearly halfway through this third quarter already, 440 to play. So here comes the double. Get it off to Francis. Jack will come back further into the front court. He zips it ahead. He tried to find Langley. Can't. And nearly another turnover. Gets it ahead to Francis. Just avoids the 10-second. Get it off to Mike Wagner. Mike going to take it in. Kicks to the corner for Blackerby. He'll drive it in on the big man. Goes up and under. Can't get it to go. No foul called. Francis scrambling for it. Can't get it. Now Bennett up defending Dempsey. Dempsey running into the front court. Got caught into the air. Now the big man will take it right at the basket. And Mitchell Whitlow got hammered. But no call. Once again, Braden Sheldon kind of getting whatever he wants here tonight. Ever since the first quarter. As there's Francis. Jack dribbling it up. Back across for Whitlow. And they make it across, and they zip it to Francis. Now Jack punches it into Wagner, and that's going to be another offensive foul called against Anderson as they can't get anything against Sheldon right now. It's 
Still a nine-point lead for the Trojans, but they haven't been able to score here in the third quarter. They've done a good job limiting New Caney, but New Caney outscoring them 6-4 to four here in the third frame. Bringing it up now is Lewis. There's Dove again, now back out onto the wing. They're looking to get it to the big man inside, Langley facing up. Or uh, Langley doing a good job keeping it behind him. He's going to turn, fade, no good. Langley chases down the board, gets it off to Francis. Jack does a good job avoiding picking up a charge. That's the kind of thing the officials like to call. Now here up ahead to Langley, Nate going to take it to the basket, kicks it to the corner. Oh, that's, oh, come on, the passing crash. That's the worst call in all the basketball. When someone kicks it to the corner and they still call the charge, that's just not a basketball play. It didn't affect the possession. I, I, I get mad whenever that's called for any team at any level. I, I hate the passing crash. As they are just letting the 6-7 player, they're officiating him differently. They're officiating him like he's a guard. Zanderson can't get anything against him right now. That's a no call. That is a no call at every level. Now here's Lewis. He gets it inside to Dove. Dove facing up on Francis, kicks it back outside. Wagner had a hand on it. No illegal screen called there as Wagner took a hit. Here's Lewis crossing over on Langley, gets around him, dumps it off to Dove. He loses it out of bounds off of just his hands. So it will be Anderson basketball after all of that. 31 to 22 with three minutes to play here in the third. Trojans will have possession. Jack gets it to Whitlow. Now back for Langley. Nate looked at the three and said he'll take it into the post. Now back outside for Wagner. Mike wants the screen from Whitlow. He sends him through, but Mitchell stays here. Wagner with Wilson defending. They get it up to Langley. Nate going to take the three at the top of the key. Knew it was short out of his hands. He's going to go try and get it, but Sheldon is there on the board. Now here's Lewis. Slows it down. Two and a half to play here in the quarter. Already six points. Uh, no, excuse me, 10 points in the quarter for New Caney after just two in the third. And that is a lucky shot from DJ Lewis. I don't think his coach wanted him to shoot that. But now it's down to a six-point game as Anderson is struggling once again mightily here in the third quarter. Up ahead to Langley. He banked in a step-back three from about 30 feet. As here's Francis all the way to the cup. And that's going to be a blocking foul. Finally, they get a foul against Sheldon. As Jack Francis will head to the line for two. They get Fred Dale checking into the game for the Trojans. Zanderson couldn't uh, do anything against this bench lineup. Well, not, not entirely bench, but a lot of bench players in the game for the Eagles as Jack Francis stepped to the line looking for two more free throws. Misses the first, just rattled out. Zanderson now really struggling to, to find the basket. As Langley will check out, Dale will check in as they're matching these minutes with Braden Sheldon. So it's a frustrating third for Anderson at every level as here's Francis makes the second. So Jack one for two. He's three for four on the day. He's got eight. Anderson gets their lead back up to seven. Now here's Dempsey. Now New Caney's starting to get real hot on offense. Hubbard around the perimeter, crosses over on Jack, spins, got caught into the air. Now back for Dempsey. He'll drive baseline, and that's got to be a travel. No call. Here's Dove. He's stuck in the corner. Now back outside. Hubbard passes it into Dove. Dove going to take it in. Jack swipes at it. Got him to lose it, but it's still New Caney ball. 90 seconds left here in the quarter. Here comes DJ Lewis, who just hit that absurd three. Now he's going to drive in on Dale, go around him, loses it. Mm. Who's, is, it, is that on Dale on the trip, or is it on Wagner? Because that's, wow, that's on Wagner? It'll be Hubbard to inbound it. Anderson with a seven-point lead. That's their third team foul. Just two going against New Caney. Is they're going to get Page into the game? They'll get Wagner out as he picks up that foul. Don't need Mike to pick up another one as there's just 90 seconds left here in this third quarter. They're going to get Page there down on the ball. Trying to get it in. 
Don't have anywhere to go with it. They just get it to the safety valve. Dove. Page is there to try and take it away, but now some awful spacing. Dove going to drive it in. Goes right at Francis. No call. And it's going to be a jump ball. So this will be New Caney basketball. They didn't call the passing crash there on New Caney. They called it on Anderson on the other end. They shouldn't call it on either. As here's Hubbard. As Page just having to get back in bounds. They're going to try and get it into Brandon, but he's going to be doubled heavily. As here's Hubbard looking to get Dempsey. Now looking back towards the middle. Now back to Dempsey. They finally find Dove. Here's Brandon around the screen, and he'll just pull it back. 120 remain. As here's Dempsey. 32-25. Anderson with the lead. New Caney outscoring Anderson by four in this third quarter. Back for Page, or back Page defending. It's Dove. Here's Dempsey. Jack tried to get the ball away. He can't. But now here's Ben Blackaby defending. It's Hubbard. He's going to try the three. That's no good. Rebound going to go long and out of bounds. Brandon, Samuel Brandon tried to save it, but it was just too long for him as they're going to get Derek Armour back into the game. They'll get Dale out. 58 seconds left. Not sure if Anderson going to be able to, just the way that New Caney plays defense. I know Anderson would like to hold for the final shot. Not sure if they're going to be able to. But they get Wagner back in. So it's going to be Armour, Francis, Whitlow, Wagner, and Blackerby. Now here's Jack. Looking for somewhere to go with it. Waits for it to come. Back to Wagner, back to Francis. Now back to Mike. Mike will take it across. No, he gets stuck. Now back to Jack. Jack doubled. And they tried to get it into Whitlow, but a foul called against Whitlow as Anderson is just the victim of, of some unfortunate calls here right now you got to get someone back into the game yeah they'll get Paige and Dale back in they'll get Mitchell on the foul as Wagner and Armour are going to check back out as Anderson can't buy one here in the third quarter Here's Dempsey. Just a seven-point game now. Back out for Dove. Dove to Brandon. Now back for Lewis. He's going to try it again. Looks good from here, and that's going to be an air ball, but right into the hands of Dove. Just a lucky bounce, and everything going the way of the Eagles right now. That wasn't You couldn't even draw that up. As here's Jack Francis gets it to Blackerby. Bennett into the air. Over to Page. Page going to step and fire into a three. Colin Page knocks it down. That's a big shot for Colin as Anderson needed something, as that's his first make of the game. As it pushes it back to an eight-point lead. Here's Dempsey. Tried to take the charge, but Dempsey was able to knock it down anyway. Dylan Dempsey, the first eagle into double figures, the first player into double figures. As Anderson going to call the timeout here. As Coach Pitt is just lo at a loss for words right now. It's a 30-second timeout. I don't think he wanted to use that at all. As they have it back down to a six-point game. It will be Anderson basketball, but that's not how they wanted to do it. Dylan Dempsey, the high man for New Caney with ten points. Anderson with another rough, rough third quarter here. Wagner out, Page in. Otherwise, it's the starting five for the Trojans. Nope, now they'll get him. So Trojan basketball, they've got Sheldon to guard the inbound. Has three fouls. Just two team fouls called against New Caney in this half. As they'll get Page in and they'll get Wagner back out. They say he didn't check in. But he'll just head to the bench. But Page, with, uh, with a big play here in the third quarter, not, not probably an ill-advised shot, but he knocked it down. But here's Whitlow to inbound it after the timeout. They get it into Blackerby. No foul called on Lewis. Is, is that the end of the quarter? Uh, that is the end of the quarter, so I'm not sure why Anderson wasted time out there. I don't think they wanted to. But with that, we head to the fourth quarter. It was an excellent one there for New Caney. As Anderson not able to keep the defensive pressure up, and New Caney with some fortunate bounces and some fortunate whistles. Kamar Dove, the recipient of an air ball right into his hands that he was able to lay in to cut it down to a six-point game. So Anderson heads to the fourth quarter. It's do or die time. Last week they were able to, keyword survive and advance.
they'll have to do the same thing here tonight against this new Caney team that is hungry. Very tough defensively. And they're getting the benefit of the whistle here in the second half. It will be Anderson basketball to uh, to start the possession, or the fourth quarter here, I believe. You see the possession arrow over to the Trojan bench. All righty, Anderson, starters back in for the fourth quarter. Lewis in the game along with Hubbard, Dempsey, Brandon, and Sheldon. So ball deep in the backcourt for Wagner. Anderson got to make the right plays here. Looking, Mike Wagner looking, gets it into Whitlow, tried to draw the foul. Back for Francis, Jack going to dribble into one, but he'll pull it back out for Wagner. Now Wagner doubled off to Blackerby. Brandon defending him. Too much on the closeout. Blackerby going to pull up and knocks it down from the mid-range. Bennett Blackerby up to nine points in the game, and Anderson needing every bucket that they can get here moving forward. Here's Dempsey coming up into the front court for New Caney. Back out for Lewis. Now there's Hubbard. Hubbard, two points in the game. Kills his dribble. Blackerby there to defend. It's Dempsey. Ten points in the game for him. He's had a good afternoon from the scoring perspective as Langley tried to take the charge, and they're just going to swallow the whistle now. As Nate Langley was there set up, and he took the hit, and no whistle was blown. I'm not, not sure what else you can do if you're Langley. As here comes Wagner, crosses over, takes a, a couple swipes from New Caney players. No calls there. Back to Wagner. Wagner going to dribble it in. Oh, he had Wagner Blackaby open. Instead, he'll find Whitlow. Mitchell going to take it in. Back for Blackerby. Bennett going to step into one. Bennett can't stay hot. Rebound. Tapped away to Langley. Langley gets the layup. That's, that was all Mitchell Whitlow. Slapped it out of the hands of Sheldon into the hands of Nate Langley. And now Nate up to five. Here's Dempsey going to dribble into one. That's no good. Rebound goes strong to Langley. Anderson will take that as it's now 39-31, six and a half to play. Here's Whitlow off to Langley. Nate going to take a few dribbles inside. Gets around the defender. Lays it up and in. Nate Langley back to back. Buckets. That's huge for the Trojans. As it's now once again a 10-point game. It's 41 to 31. Anderson storming back here at the start of the fourth quarter. Now Francis defending Dempsey. Dempsey gonna try and get around him. It's Brandon in the corner. He's got one already, and he's got another there. That's a big shot by Sam Brandon. Is Coach Pitt giving his team an earful? as you can't uh, leave a, a shooter open in the corner like that after they've played good defense all game. And that one keeps New Caney alive here tonight. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break of our own. We'll be right back with more Anderson basketball on Vibe Live. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates the Wilson, she fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeBYPE.com. Back in it. Anderson really um, just to overall in these past two games, just pretty sloppy play from the Trojans after uh, we're not totally used to that from them. They've had their turnover troubles uh, all season, but they have really uh, really jumped up to the next level here in this one, or in these past two games. But the defense has been better. It's now 41 to 34 after giving up a wide open look to Sam Brandon in the corner. As here's Wagner, gonna put it on the floor. Got to gotta make a decision with it soon. As he takes a big hit, I'm not sure, no whistle there. Is Wagner going to push it up the floor, loses it again, gets it back. So all of that, very frantic for Wagner as Brown was draped all over him. He's now Wagner with it back on the perimeter again. Is Brown going to be the one to defend him? That's a, literally a reach in. As Anderson can't get anything right now. Is back out for Francis, shakes the man off, going to take it inside, going to pull up. Can't get it to go off the glass. As now Jack going to get it right back. Pulls it back out, and he will reset. Under five and a half to play now in just a moment. Jack crosses over on Dove. He'll pull it back out and give it to Wagner. So if Anderson can create second chance opportunities, that's going to be big. Dishes it off to Langley. That's going to be blocked by Sheldon. Sheldon has been given Anderson fits when he's been able to get under the basket. And now that, 
This has not been a consistent whistle. Anderson is getting hammered, and now that like Wagner took three of those hits, just bringing them all up the floor. I saw number 23, Jordan Brown, with his hands reached all the way through Wagner's body trying to poke at the ball. Anderson, you can't use that as, a, as an excuse. You just have to keep fighting, but it's got to be frustrating for these Anderson players right now. So they just get this into Sheldon. Now back for Brown. Brown going to kick it to the corner for Hubbard. They get it into Sheldon in the post. Hubbard driving in. Langley goes up with it. And that's a charge. Finally, Anderson can get a charge underneath. And Nate Langley is there to set up and force the turnover. That's a big, big time play for Nate Langley as that's just the third team foul going against New Caney in this half. 5-11 to play. Anderson has a seven-point lead. They need all of the points that they can get. Francis back for Wagner. Back to Jack. Now J Jack gets it to Mike, and Mike able to launch it over to Francis, and we are underway. Here's Nate Langley back to uh, Wagner. Double comes, crosses over, and he throws that out of bounds. As this has not been a good game from the point guard, Mike Wagner, just too many turnovers as he is really letting this press get to him here tonight. Anderson. Just giving New Caney life with all these turnovers. Under five to play, 41-31. It's wide open here as New Caney very easily could come back into this. As here's Dempsey with a crossover. Gets it back out for Brown. Now up top to Sheldon. Whitlow there defending. Brown, hop step, floater is good. Mitchell loses it out of bounds. He saves it. Just gets it into Langley. Very nearly a disaster for Anderson. And fine. Oh, well, now he takes a hit, but not before the foul is called. I'm not sure how they didn't couldn't call that on Wilson, but now Anderson's going to have to uh, do it again, and they have to burn another timeout. They'll have it inbound on the side. It'll be a full timeout, so we'll go ahead and take it with them. It is 41 to 36. Anderson letting this one slip back into the hands of New Caney. Right now, they have a five point lead. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Now Anderson has to do everything they can to try and pull out a win here. They've led for most of the game, but New Caney knocking on the door late. Anderson has to stop turning it over and has to stop giving New Caney easy looks at the basket. Four and a half to play, just a five-point lead. That's not going to cut it for the Trojans. It's all the momentum on the side of the Eagles. Well, that's a little made up, but certainly feels real in the moment. They're just trying to get it in. They finally do, as Brown was holding on to Wagner's arm there. As here comes Jack, crosses over on Dove. Does a good job just to get it across court. Now here comes Wagner all the way to the cup, loses it out of bounds, and that's another turnover for Mike Wagner. And a travel going against Brandon. That's a lucky break for the Trojans. He chopped his feet after another Wagner turnover. Tried to keep his feet set, and he just couldn't. And that's going to be a turnover. We'll have a substitution. It'll be Kamar Dove back into the game. For, um, for Kendall Dove. So we'll swap Doves. 41-36. Anderson with the ball. Wagner looking for somewhere to go with it. Trying to find Jack. They get it to Langley. Nate takes a big bump. Another no call as Anderson trying to get it away. Langley comes away with it to the floor. Langley has it. And that's going to go out of bounds. That has to be Trojan ball and it is. So Anderson just struggling with the simple things here right now. But they are awarded possession with just four minutes to play. 4.08 to be exact. As they'll get Black and be fading to the corner, it's not there. They'll just have to send it in to Nate Langley. Take all the time you can on a possession like this. As Wagner's got to have the tighter handles. Th dishes it off to Langley. Nate going to take another block, gets it back, lays it up, lays it in. Nate Langley, that's a big basket. 
as that's another block for Braden Sheldon underneath because he has been all over it here in this after uh, this evening's game. Is now driving in as Brown. He'll step back, tries to go cross court, left open, and no good. Rebound high, Blackerby bats it away. Now here's Wagner and a good defensive possession for the Anderson Trojans to get the ball back with three and a half to play. Ball over to Francis, ball ahead to Langley. Back to Mike, and they will slow it down. Into the hands of Francis. Now Whit Whit Whitlow, excuse me, and that's going to be a foul going against Brown. He just grabbed him. Little take foul there. It's honestly, I mean, the way Anderson has struggled just getting the ball in, it's uh, probably smart to, to try and force him to do it as many times as, as possible. But now under three and a half to play. Anderson with a seven-point lead and the ball. They had it up to as many as ten in this half. Well, uh, in this fourth quarter, they had it up to as many as ten. So here comes Francis, no resistance, letting Jack get the ball. They get it to Blackaby. He's left open. He'll try and put it on the floor, get caught in the air. Francis, ooh, he had a three, but instead he'll pull it in and pull it back out. Double comes. You have Blackaby in the corner. They dish it off to Wagner. Now Mike takes a bump. Back to Francis. Jack going to drive in. Back to Whitlow. They'll slow it up. Back to Wagner. And just keep the ball flowing, keep the ball moving. Now ooh, Blackaby open in the corner. Francis going to take another take foul. And Jack wants it on the shot as he, <laughs> as he felt it coming and just put it up. As now Anderson will have to inbound it again. Jack headed to the line trying to sell it, but they will not let him. It's the right call, I think. Now three minutes left in the game. Now Whitlow. Black could be behind you. Oh, they've had Bennett open a few times. I want Bennett to, to be the one to take these threes. As he is, he's the man to do it on this team for the most part. Now back for Francis. Pass fake off to Langley. And Anderson content to just to milk some clock here at this point. Now back to Blackerby. Now back to Francis. And if you're New Caney, you're hoping Anderson just makes a bad pass or, or a silly error. But they haven't done it yet nearly. It was a little bit risky, but not too bad. But here's Whitlow with it in the high post. He gets it off to Francis. Anderson just wasting time. They've used a full minute here. He's not going to put it on the floor. Crosses back to his left. He'll pull back. Ooh, he's shifting there on Nate Flowers. Now here's Mike Wagner. And that's going to be a foul against Flowers. Jack Francis doing a good job uh, forcing him into it. But Jack down, holding his knee. Finally, uh, Jack, let's see if he's able to get up. He's looking for his teammates to, to lift him. And he comes up gingerly, but it looks like he's okay. So they'll get him out of the game. And by the way, that's the final foul to give on New Caney. They did quick, three quick take fouls. And now Anderson will have the ball back to inbound it. They'll get the big man back out of the game. They'll get Brandon back into the game. So it's going to be Dove, Dove, Hubbard, Dempsey and Brandon in the game now for the Eagles. They trail it by seven. They've, they've wasted a whole lot of the clock here on this possession Anderson has. It's now under two and a half to play. Here's Jack with it out on the perimeter. Taking the bumps from Hubbard. He goes to his left, kills his dribble, and that's going to be a foul going against New Caney. Got him on, the, on a bump. So now that'll send Jack to the line, and he will have a one and one. So Anderson doing a good job of wasting clock. Let's see if Jack can make him pay by knocking down the free throws. It's been an absolute rock fight here tonight. No Anderson player in double figures. A few guys with eight and nine. So Whitlow heads to the bench. The five now for the Trojans are the starters plus Page minus Whitlow. But we will see more of Mitchell. But now Jack steps to the line for the front end, and that is a big free throw for the senior Francis. This is, this is how they can win it, is they just have to make their free throws as they will get a, their fair share coming down the stretch, I imagine. As Jack goes one for two. Page Skies can't get it away, and they're going to get Colin on the foul there. Call, it, it, he didn't have the jump, but he didn't really have the foul either. Kind of leaned back into him. But Jack goes one for two, makes it 44-36, and now with 219, New Caney with the ball. They're going to have to make some shots here. In the second half, they've been doing that. Anderson just has to stay disciplined and stay on people's backs because otherwise New Caney is going to have to start fouling. They just don't have enough time not to. Ooh, they're going to reset it. Now 2.18 left. Anderson without a foul to give, so it will be one and one uh, going forward. Not sure what the conversation is, but both teams in the bonus now. Anderson with 16 fouls, New Caney with 7. 
after picking up four quick ones here in the fourth. They zip it to Brandon in the corner as, ooh, Blackerby tried to get him on the closeout, but instead he took a knee to Brandon's face, and they're both down in a heap. That's a little accidental, but uh, he was going to try and get him on the flyby, but he went to his right instead of his left. Blackerby was coming on his right side, and I, I, with the way that things have gone, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a flagrant foul against Bennett Blackerby. Bennett was uh, coming in to close out. Brandon was trying to relocate. But now Bennett down in a heat. Brandon comes up. He will have one and one uh, and probably the ball back. Blackerby up. I think he's okay. He's just going to try and walk it off. Can't feel good. So two Anderson players go down with affected knees. And I think that's a basketball play. I mean, Bennett didn't. He didn't swing down. He didn't make anything like that. He just got caught in the air on a closeout. And I, I feel like this has to be a, a common foul. It looked nasty, but, yep, they're going to call a flagrant because that's how it's been uh, throughout this postseason for Anderson. That's a, that's a basketball play. Bennett made a basketball play, and it was unfortunate that he took that big of a hit. But now um, New Caney going to get a chance to cut back into the lead because of um, four free throws here. But they have to make them. Can you can the non-flagrant shooter shoot the flagrant? The man who was fouled should have to shoot, correct? Yeah, ten has to shoot these. It's not a technical foul. So in back-to-back -back games, in the waning moments, Anderson is the victim of two flagrant fouls that give the opponent two free throws and the ball. And that would make it a six-point game, plus, uh, well, I guess the one and one. So here's the front end, and he misses the first. So that's three flagrant free throws that Anderson has been uh, victim to, and it's 0 for 3. Crockett, uh, not Crockett, uh, Connolly went 0 for 2, and now New Caney 0 for 1. Let's see if Brandon, who has six points in the game, can knock it, uh, make it at least 1 for 2 for the Eagles to keep their chances alive. 2.09 left in the game, and he does. So Brandon with seven, and it should be, it should just be free throws, right? Well, no, I guess not. I guess not. Uh, it'll just be them with the ball. So a break for Anderson, or perhaps not, um, the way that they've been shooting from the foul line today. But here we go, Dove with the ball. Two, uh, two minutes remain. Here's Brandon with it. Blackaby out of the game, and now a shot is no good. Rebound, Colin Page. Sheldon found himself open, and that's going to be another turnover for Mike Wagner. Here comes Hubbard, and a foul call? I guess they'll get Page on that, as this has not been the game for Mike Wagner. As here's Joey Hubbard to the line with 157, as Blackaby makes his way back to the bench. He looks like he's okay, um, at least in the grand scheme of things. Not sure about his status going forward, but that doesn't really matter. Um, just all about whether he is um, okay, and he's walking around under his own power. But here's a front end. It's no good. Rebound strong to Mitchell Whitlow. He goes down, and that's going to be out of bounds off of New Caney. New Caney was the last to touch it as it was going out of bounds. It will be Anderson basketball. Both teams uh, touch the ball on the baseline, but instead of calling the foul, they'll just give Anderson the ball back, it looks like. But now we are under two minutes to play. Blackerby back into the game, so we love to see that, Bennett, um, not just from a basketball perspective but just um, love to see that he is okay he was down for a little while he was being helped out by the trainers there so we're glad to see that Bennett's all right but now we have um, under 120 seconds of basketball to play Anderson in a comfortable position they lead it 44 37 Wagner able to get it back to Whitlow Mitchell running in and that's going to be a bump going against Dempsey so they weren't trying to foul but I think it's smart that you uh, just try and get the ball back in your hands as soon as possible it's, uh, it's just depending on your like coaching philosophy. Do you try and get the, the stop, or do you try and just foul quickly and get the ball back? Um, but I think when you're when you're shooting a one and one I think that's the smart play is to just foul, um, and then instead of giving them two free throws uh, when there's a double bonus. But right now it's just a single bonus um, for one more foul. Mi Ooh, Mitchell makes the first. That one <laughs> looked a little long, but... It clanked off the back iron and in. So Mitchell Whitlow, a big shot there, puts the Trojan lead back to eight points. He has a chance to send it to nine if he hits that. He can't. So Anderson, one for two. That gives New Caney a chance. They'll have to hurry. Here comes Dempsey. Minute 45 left. 
Back to the corner for Hubbard. He'll drive in. Blackerby there to take the charge. He can't, but Hubbard hits the shot. And we have a timeout for, uh, I believe, New Caney. But with that, cuts the lead back down to six. Anderson will have possession, 45-39. It is a full timeout, so we'll go ahead and take a break. Not sure if it'll be our last of the broadcast, but we'll take it here. We'd like to thank you for tuning in. We've got an exciting one down the stretch. Trojans lead it by six. Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe View program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vibe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. For, uh, well, excuse me, sorry. Didn't have it loud enough. Uh, back into it. New Caney has all their pesky defenders in. They've got Flowers, they've got Brandon, they've got Brown. But Anderson will have it with 99 seconds left to play. A six-point lead. Francis trying to get the ball. Whitlow finds Jack. Jack going to take it up the baseline. He froze Brown. He gets it up to Langley. Blackerby had it all the way by himself, and that's going to be a foul going against Brown. But that's the one you want to foul. You want to foul Langley in this situation. Nate has to step to the line and make some big shots. Otherwise, New Caney with a chance to cut it to just a one-possession game. You need the front end, especially. Page will check in for the shooter. Dylan Dempsey back into the game for the Eagles. Got the big fella on the bench in the closing moments. But here comes Nate for the first free throw, and that's no good. As, is this a fan issue? As the Anderson bench is pointing up to the stands, I think they're getting some, uh, they're not pleased with some of the antics coming from the New Caney fan base. As I think someone's getting ejected. What's happening? Might be a technical foul. But Anderson doing everything they can to give New Caney a crack at this down the stretch. 133 to go. As they missed the front end of the one and one there. Not sure what the issue is, but Langley's going to head back to the line for a, for a one and one, I think. So they're trying to get a fan out of this game. Yeah, pink sweatshirt over there. <laughs> is this? Are we going to get another free throw for Lang? Is it going to be the front end of a one and one again, or well, we'll just slow the whole game down because everyone headed over to the bench. I think they're trying to figure out how to manage this in the best way, uh, and by the best way, I think they're going to try and. Okay, we have a noisemaker. We had a noisemaker from a new Caney player, so Langley will head to the line to start over his one and one. And Nate, you got to hit this one. Beautiful shot. You can't give him that, as that might. That is a that is a swing. That is a big swing. As Langley is the first Trojan into double figures now with that. And he goes two for two. So a two-point swing in the clutch for the Anderson Trojans. As man, they, that is that is massive. That is absolutely massive. That is the officials. I mean, the rules are rules. He was using a noisemaker, but that's officials deciding a game potentially. If uh, New Caney can't come back from that, as here comes Dempsey, uh, under a minute and a half to play now. Here's Hubbard on the wing. And we have an offensive foul. Colin Page playing the role of instigator once again. Forces the offensive foul. Forces the turnover. And the Trojans have the ball back with 124 remaining. And hey, 124. Shout out to Mitch Whitlow and Nate Langley. Number one and number 24 for this Trojan team. Back-to-back -back big games. Langley up to uh, 11 now with those two foul shots. 
off 16 points against Connolly. Whitlow with 12 uh, in the first game against Connolly. Nine here tonight, both well above his season scoring average. So two big players uh, coming in and making a huge play. And this is Noisemaker Gate. <laughs> it gives Anderson, it gives uh, New Caney, who had the ball. Instead, it's Anderson with two shots and two extra points is now a bump and a foul. Mike Wagner now into the double bonus. He'll step to the line for some free throws, and Mike has a chance to, uh, to redeem himself here. But New Caney, even if you think about it, when Langley missed the front end, as Mike misses the first, uh, when... Even though Langley hit those two free throws, if that had not happened, it was still a dead ball situation. If they had given New Caney the ball back, they went right back on the other end and had an offensive foul and turned it over. So who's really to say, as Wagner at least goes one for two, uh, all points are good points, as that makes it a nine-point game as Colin Page back in with Wagner headed to the bench. As Wagner really clinched the game with his defense against Connolly, uh, him and Page both just getting an absurd amount of steals and deflections in that last game. But here comes Dempsey crossing over, takes it right to the cup, misses the shot. That has to be an over the pack. It's not called, but it'll be an air ball on the jumper, and Langley clears away the board, lobs it ahead to Francis. Langley takes the bump, so Nate will head to the line for two more free throws. And man, those two points for Nate Langley. Well, again, New Caney has not scored since, but those two points for Nate Langley, are that was just absolutely freaking massive. Uh, as we get to the end of this game. Anderson, uh, if Nate hits one, it'll be a 10-point game. If he hits two, it'll be 11. And with a minute and eight seconds left, that's going to be a tough situation to come back from. So the winner here plays Weiss. Anderson doing their best to make sure it's them. Double bonus time as Langley, after clanking the front end of a one-and-one, one, has made his last three free throws in a clutch situation, Nate Langley becoming the leading scorer of the Anderson play, uh, Trojans in the playoffs is your, your 6-3 center. Nate Langley, automatic, puts the Anderson Trojans up by 11. And with just 90 seconds left, or excuse me, not 90, 70, really 68, this is going to be tough for New Caney. I don't imagine they will score 11 more points. But I think I all but guaranteed it with that, as here's Dempsey gets it over to Hubbard. You see, now they're just taking too much time. They just have to get in these catch-and-shoot situations. As that's Hubbard. He had a good look at it, missed it. That went off of Langley's head. There's Dove, and they're going to get uh, Page on the bump. So more free throws coming for New Caney, but I think Anderson is okay with that. This has been a, a slow burn and a rock fight, but now New Caney heads to the line to try and cut it back to, <coughs> uh, excuse me, to a single-digit game. But they, in the meantime, they were forced to waste about, math, 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 13 seconds. And that's all that, that's the name of the game for the Trojans, really, is just burn clock. It doesn't matter. I mean, it, they've scored 50. Now Now you have to make New Caney score 50. So front end is good. So in the second half, New Caney able to, to knock down some free throws with a little more regularity. But the first half, they, they were really struggling from that part of the uh, of the game. But now Anderson will be in the double bonus for the rest of the game as well. As that's 0 for 2 is, or excuse me, 1 for 2 Wagner there. As Wagner's going to get fouled again and New Caney just uh, not letting any time. So we'll, we'll have a little bit more time run off the clock here. game's not over yet of course taking their time on these subs so all in all this is one of the longer games that we will have uh, have watched uh, this season going well over an hour and a half Anderson got through some of these games in, in, in 60 minutes and some of these blowout games but now okay now we're ready to uh, yeah we're ready to go starters in it now Wagner has the line knocks in the first Six points in the game now for Wagner. Puts it back to a 11-point uh, lead. As I said, key word, survive and advance. And, ah, Mike goes one for two on both of his uh, trips to the foul line here. 
in the late stretch of the game. But here comes Hubbard, crosses over, dishes it off to Dove. That's going to go out of bounds off the hands of Mike Wagner. Mike saying <laughs> Anderson was walking back. I don't think Anderson touched it. But it, it, whatever, you know. Um, 47 seconds left. Anderson with an 11-point lead. This is a, this is a long... Uh, New Caney's doing pretty good with clock management. As that backfires, he tried to throw it off of Francis' back. Jack recovers, gets it, and now Wagner with it. Dishes it off to his man, Francis. Jack looking to avoid the contact, and Jack can't. He takes a hit to the face. As now Francis will step to the line for two. That scoots Jack into double figures. Two beauties from Jack Francis. Puts it to 53-40. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think that'll do her. As Jack, ooh, tried to get that, but it'll be Lewis streaking up and Paige going to hip check him. As just keep the, keep the game moving, man. <laughs> this has been a, a long, long, long uh, way to end this game, but now with 35 0.75 left. They'll get Paige out. And they'll send DJ Lewis to the line, who made that absurd step back three early in the game. As they'll get Blackerby in. <laughs> That's five fouls on Colin Page, huh? Colin, you know, you got to make use of your five fouls. And no one does it better than number 33, Colin Page. DJ Lewis knocks down the first. I've, I've been like checked out <laughs> the last few minutes here. This has just been a lot, a lot of free throws. Two for two. Because here's Langley looking for somewhere to go with it. They'll foul Nate. So send him back to the line. They're, they're really trying to, uh, to keep this one active. It's still an 11 point game. Still 33 seconds left. Can you believe it? Is, say what you will, New Caney, um, the one fault that I, they let Anderson milk way too much clock. They let them milk like 90 seconds uh, on this end of the floor during one possession uh, when there was like three and a half left. They got it down to like two minutes. But ever since then, New Caney has been pretty on point with their clock management. Because Nate Langley has not missed since the scandalous incident with the noisemaker. So I said, a minute ago I said, I don't think New Caney's gonna score 50. Now it's 55. So it's a whole new thing. As here's Lewis, dishes it off. And we all have a dunk on the other end. That's a nice finish by Braden Sheldon. Love to see a big man throw it down. Because now they're gonna keep fouling. Let's stay here for another couple hours. Jackie back to the line, 11 points in the contest for him. As that was, I think, from, we were down to 20 seconds now as, as New Caney actually had to run a possession. But this <laughs> is the longest fourth quarter. That's not even true. I mean, we had the Langley stoppage. We had the, we just had a lot of fouls, a lot of free throws, a lot of stoppages. Anderson can't stop fouling either. New Caney can't stop fouling. Anderson can't stop fouling. Jack makes the first. I don't want to spend any more time in Bryan, Texas than I have to. I don't feel welcome in a town like this due to my scholastic allegiance, I guess. AKA the school I go to. I have, uh, I have a little Longhorn on the back of my car. I was thinking about it. Uh, we're in Bryan, so I don't think anyone cares, but... I've had friends get, like, tire slashed because of Longhorn stuff in this town. So, thankfully, as that one goes out of bounds off of New Caney, hopefully I can uh, just drive home. But if not, I imagine the team bus will be pretty raucous and pretty fun. So I might just 
stick my thumb out and hitch a ride uh, <laughs> back to the Northwest Hills. But now Anderson lobbing it across to Nate Langley, and the game should end in the hands of one of those two guys. Ball game over. Three years running. The Anderson Trojans are area champions. They head to the quarterfinal round next against Weiss. This team wants to keep it moving. They've fallen in the quarterfinals two years running, and a real messy game for Anderson ends in victory. The final score here, let's get it updated. 57 to 44, Anderson wins once again by double figures, so two double figure victories in the postseason, but they were both, that doesn't really tell the story, they were both close games. Right uh, up until the fourth quarter is uh, an emotional New Caney team. I hate to lose a game like that. Um, always tough to see your, your season end. Uh, uh, it always has to end in a loss. That's the unfortunate thing is these teams that have worked so hard and have played so well all throughout the year, someone has to go out with the L. And fortunately for Anderson tonight, it was not them. Uh, I know that they were itching to get back to the quarterfinal round, and I know they are itching to make it past the quarterfinal round for the first time in this run. Uh, everything on top of that is just gravy. So the Trojans win it here. You have a final score from Bryan, Texas. 40, uh, 57 to 44. Anderson wins it off the backs of some clutch free throw shooting from Nate Langley. Uh, just absolutely nails from the free throw line down the stretch. 15 points for him. So Nate's playoff average this year is 15 and a half. He has been a beast. Uh, Jack Francis with nine. Mitchell Whitlow, another excellent game from him. He had nine. Blackby had nine. So a little bit better output from him. And we'd love to see, more importantly, uh, him come up and able to get back into the game and play at a high level even after that little, that scary little fall in which he was awarded a flagrant. Because Mike Wagner, a forgettable game for him, but... But what's more important is they get out with the win. Mike, expect a huge bounce back from him uh, in the quarterfinal round. I know he's going to want that as he's just uh, he's had a little bit of a, a, a butterfinger situation in this postseason. But there are your Trojans down on the floor celebrating three straight area championships. This is one of the best runs uh, that this school has seen. And certainly, wow, uh, gosh, <laughs> I was thinking of the early 90s, and I was going to say the past 20 years, but definitely the last 20 years. It's, it's one of the best runs of Anderson basketball, if not the best, in the last 30 years is Coach Pitt and his his set of teams. Is we've had a lot of guys revolve through, and the one constant has been um, Coach Pitt. And Jack Francis, too, to be honest. He was a sophomore that started on that team with uh, with guys like Max Smith and Blake Spiller. But that'll do it for us. Got the long drive home back to Austin. And it's a happy one for the Anderson Trojans. Final score, 57-44. to 44. We will be back probably on Tuesday. It'll either be Monday or Tuesday, hopefully, in the Austin area against the Weiss Wolves, the champions of District 18. It'll be the first time Anderson can take a real crack at another district champion. But that'll do it for us. I want to thank you for tuning in. I've had an absolute blast tonight. It's a real funky game, real rock fight. But Anderson picks up the win. They are moving on. I'd like to thank you for tuning in one more time. My name is Jack Farrell, always bringing you the Anderson basketball games here. Nice from this little press box at Bryan High School. Absolutely love it. Hope you all have a great night, great rest of your weekend, as this is a good way to kick it off. And we will see you all.